I was planning to have this podcast episode and tackle only one topic. But for some reason, we would have to tackle three. So buckle up, it's going to be a little bit longer than usual. Hi, I'm Ian Rignon, an independent alternative media practitioner, among other things, and welcome to another episode of The Intrepid Podcast. Now, you might be wondering why on earth am I uh, uh, recording now, so uh, or only now. So, actually, I have a lot of things to sort out, and it's coming to Christmas at this point, so... Uh, I really just can't uh, record that much because of uh, my other duties. I, I mean, I only record this for uh, for fun, and uh, hopefully I can monetize this. But I can only uh, I can only wish that it would be sooner. So uh, I just wanted to just share my th- uh, thoughts and uh, ideas and perspectives about uh, a lot of things and. One of them is one of them is advent. And uh you might be wondering what's advent? Is that the adventist church or something? No. It's not. Advent is basically the season uh the the liturgical season before Christmas. So uh for some liturgical Christians or for some uh Christians who uh who are uh, following the the calendar uh, the liturgical calendar advent is basically 4 weeks before christmas advent is 4 weeks before christmas and it's a uh, it's being sidelined at this point because uh of the other holidays and the other um and the other uh and the other stuff and honestly it has been sidelined significantly in these past few decades because uh, of the commercialization of Christmas. Basically, Advent is taking the side, uh, is making, taking the back seat because Christmas is in full swing after Halloween or after Thanksgiving in other in other countries. But you see, it's not that uh, it's not healthy because after the 25th of December they won't uh, consider it Christmas uh, they would uh, throw away all their decorations or keep them uh, keep them in their attics or something but you see we Filipinos are the most one of the most extreme uh, revelers uh, when it comes to uh, celebrating Christmas because as early as September, we are already uh, hearing Jose Marichan and uh, in his uh, and his uh, quintessential uh, Christmas album called "Christmas in Our Hearts." Now, there's nothing wrong with preparing for Christmas, but I really think that in order for us to prepare properly for Christmas, is for us to consider thinking about or consider uh, commemorating Advent first for at least four weeks. So that's basically Advent. Now, you might be wondering, okay, so Advent is basically uh, four weeks before Christmas, the pre-Christmas period, and that's it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, It's preparing for uh, for the commemoration of Christmas. That's it. But there are some Christians, specifically Catholics and maybe some of the some of our Orthodox and Anglican brethren, that think that Advent is more than just about Christmas. Because it's not just about it. Advent is also, and actually more importantly, uh, preparing for the second coming of Christ. Basically, it's a twofold advent is a twofold thing 
we um we remember the first coming of Christ and crisp in Christmas and we prepare for the second coming at the end of the world. And borrowing uh and borrowing a quote wherein uh wherein he said uh we are an Easter people and alleluia is our song we are basically modifying it to uh to uh to the season that we are into for two weeks now as of this recording because um Gaudete Sunday or the uh or Rose Candle Sunday is about to uh is about to hit hit us in the past, in the next few days and uh I would just have to tell everyone that we await the the advent of the Lord and DS Ire is our song yes DS Ire uh the quintessential uh the quintessential death music of um of both uh mainstream uh mainstream secular music and um and liturgical or sacred music is actually a good advent hymn or advent uh or something that we can sing properly in advent and you know uh if you're not really aware of uh what ds ire is well you might be uh you might be familiar with the first four notes of that chant <laughs> Actually, that's really that's not really four notes, but uh, you get the point. The first uh, the first intonation of uh, the DS Ire is something that uh, a lot of people, even though they are not religious, they would absolutely connotate that with death, destruction, the macabre, and if they're um, if they're uh, if they're a little bit religious or enough or agnostic. They would uh they would associate it with doomsday because it really is basically uh what we're gonna sing on doomsday <laughs> so whether we like it or not it will come and and that's why advent is important we are preparing for the second coming for armageddon the end of days the apocalypse we are preparing for that and uh and basically ds ire is an advent hymn hymn as much as the first die hard movie is a christmas film so that's where i place my bets now uh that's basically what i would like to tell you at this point about advent and uh I can actually uh, end this uh, podcast right here, right now. But then again, uh, we have two other topics, and I think this this is absolutely important, especially in the Filipino context. But first, uh, you might be wondering why do I uh, why do I pause or why do I cons- uh, uh, compact uh, three topics now? Well, honestly, I don't have. The luxury of time to even uh, record one topic per podcast I would love to I already have scripts for some of them but this one's uh, on show notes uh, mode so uh, good luck on my editing skills but then again you might be wondering who am I and why do I do this now IJR productions is created to uh to defer or to differentiate uh, my content and m- my way of uh producing uh media content than the ones that we see in the local uh in the local scene basically this uh this space begs to differ and I would love to uh I would love to hear from you if you have any suggestions for me to uh for me to improve because i'm just a human being and i would love to improve on everything that would help me uh, be a better person and a better uh, uh practitioner or uh, independent alternative media practitioner so that's that now as i said i don't have 
the uh, the luxury of time, but also I'm not that cash strapped because I'm doing this for free. I'm doing this uh, in my spare time, and the the equipment that I have right now here in Intrepid HQ, it just uh, is the basic, the most basic of setups. So I would very much appreciate it if you're very generous enough to uh, sub, uh, not only subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel called IJR Productions and then ring the notification be- bell by selecting all, but also if you are very generous and you have spare uh, money uh, or uh, some extra Christmas money that uh, you, you're, not, you're not intending to give to anyone else, than to uh, very good uh, content creators, I'm begging you. Namamas ko po ako sa inyo. <laughs> Ganun eh. But uh, I would appreciate it if you're very generous enough to uh, to uh, donate through my crowd uh, to my platforms on crowdfunding uh, uh, or to my accounts on my on crowdfunding platforms such as. Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, Ko-Fi, and PayPal. The links to them are in the YouTube description below. I would also try to incorporate that if ever I get to uh, I get to upload this as well on Spotify. So um, currently, that's where uh, the Intrepid Podcast is right now. So it's basically a supplement or a complement to the Intrepid Show or to the uh, to the regular regularly scheduled programming of IJR Productions. So, uh, yeah, I would very much appreciate it if you would... Uh, <clears throat> wow, what's going on with my my throat? Anyway, I would appreciate it if you would be generous enough for uh, uh, for me to continue with, uh, with what I do best. So, yeah. Hi, Post Prodian here, and I think I would just like to add from uh, everything that I have just said in this podcast episode and uh, think about uh, another perspective, why people are not really into uh, Advent uh, that much because uh, in the first place, they are not really interested with Christmas especially now that uh, we have been dealing with death for two years now. So, uh, yeah, I think, I just think uh, that's the reason why uh, a lot of people are just just wanting to get over with Christmas. That's the reason why they are just commercializing it in, in the very first place. And if you notice that uh, this audio, the quality of this audio is different it's because i am recording while i'm editing the whole episode i am just adding this up as a as an addition to the topic that i uh i have just uh finished saying and i'll go i'm going to add this before i provide you a a version of me singing an Advent hymn called Babylon is Fallen. So uh, I hope you do enjoy this uh, this hymn. I have recorded all four voices of it. It's not that good. I'm applying Ling Ling Insurance for it. If you're uh, if you're a fan of two set violin, and again, I'm just testing uh, this uh, lapel mic that I have just purchased and see how. Uh, how good it, how good or bad it is compared to uh, the other microphones that I have that are uh, that are uh, being used at this point. So, yeah. Again, enjoy. Hail the day so long expected. Hail the year of full release. Zion's walls are now erected, and her watchmen publish peace. Throughout Shiloh's wide dominion, hear the trumpet loudly roar. 
Babylon this fallen, this fallen, this fallen. Babylon this fallen to rise no more. Babylon this fallen, this fallen, this fallen. Babylon this fallen to rise no more. All her merchants stand with wonder. What is this that comes to pass? Murmuring like a distant thunder, crying, oh, alas, alas. Swell the sound, ye kings and nobles, priests and people, rich and poor. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is fallen to rise no more. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is fallen to rise no more. Blow the trumpet in Mount Zion. Christ is come a second time. Ruling with a rod of iron, all who now as foes combine. Babel's garments we rejected, and her fellowship is o'er. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is fallen to rise no more. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is fallen to rise no more. Now these two, uh, now these other two topics that we're going to talk about, they are very, very, very recent, and I'm pretty sure that uh, a lot of people uh, have a say about this and uh, it's a little bit conflicting uh, to be honest because really it's just uh, I mean I do have popcorn here in Intrepid HQ but I don't wanna I don't wanna uh, live in popcorn alone uh, because uh, I do have to uh, maintain a healthy diet in order for me to uh, uh, to supplement or to complement my uh, cycling hobby. So that's that. But the other topic that we're going to talk about is about uh, breaking the cycle on uh, generational uh, generational debt, and uh, as well as uh, as well as the right and wrong ways of expressing gratitude or in Tagalog at the very least uh, the the concept of utang na loob <clears throat> many uh, many young people are saying that utang na loob is very obsolete and it should be eradicated um, once and for all however uh we just have to know we we notice as well that there are no or there are little to no uh, aged care facilities or um uh, or uh systems that uh is uh installed or should i say implemented in our country so that means when you uh go when you grow old uh you are left at the mercy of your children or if you're lucky enough, a retirement home because your children can afford it. But other than that, it's just a sad state of affairs. Now, the reason why I uh, incorporated incorporated this topic uh, to our ep- uh, podcast episode is because of a gaming... Uh, a gaming personality or an internet gaming personality named H2O. Basically, it's H2O, but uh, it's spelled as H, the number two, W, and O. So that's uh, 
basically it. Now, this guy's mother uh, was uh, was basically uh, leeching, leeching on uh, H two H two O's success, and it's very much familiar because uh, some celebrities have mothers or parents who very much uh, try to uh, be, you know, try to uh, uh, piggyback on the success of their children because uh, they uh, they hit big uh, on a, in a lot of things. Now, I'm not going to name names, but you have, uh, you have an idea and uh, they are basically the archetypes of these kind of people uh, that H2O and his mother is uh, currently at this point. Now, uh, maybe H2O was fed up with uh, with his mother's um, with his mother's uh, quote unquote shenanigans, and that's the reason why he uh, posted uh, or uh, uh, a compilation of screenshots of of his conversation with his mom. And honestly, even Paulul was not having it he was just uh he was just laughing his ass out because if you if you ask me that's very toxic uh parent behavior and uh as someone who has who is an adult son the firstborn uh for our for our family i experienced this in a very minuscule way but not as toxic as um, H2O's mom. Now, there would be uh, times that both parents are gaslighting their children in helping them uh, get on with their um, with the rest of their lives, literally. Uh, there are also some who, uh, who have parents that are hybrid. One, and it's usually the mother, uh is just fine that uh her children would just uh, voluntarily help them financially or whatever and then uh, the other parents uh and the and the other parent uh usually this is the father uh is unsatiable i mean they're not really um uh, uh they're they think it's never enough because uh in their mindset especially uh especially fathers they're the ones who uh sacrifice their lives and their uh, liberties and their um and the and their ways of life in order to raise their kids now uh while that in itself is a good thing reminding children of that is not only gaslighting, but it's uh, basically insulting uh, their intellect or their uh, or their uh, perspective in things. Now, that's also the reason why a lot of young adults are just fed up with living with their um, living with their uh, parents, and they would just love to. Uh, Live alone in Manila or in other um, in other metropolitan cities, or just live alone and uh, never talk about uh, their parent their parents again, and uh, it only um, it only depends if they would love to uh, they would have uh, loved ones or they would have uh, spouses to uh, to accommodate in those houses or partners and, or even children. Now. It's a case to case basis or a case by case basis so uh, I'm not here to tackle that but the thing is uh, a lot of people or a lot of uh, Filipino uh, people are either gaslighting parents or indifferent children because of the trauma and the hurt that these people inflict on each other basically parents and their children or even in themselves it just perpetuates 
this vicious cycle of poverty, of uh, of uh, unhappiness, um, of not being content, and all that. And it's very, very, very sad that we have to uh, deal with this. But honestly, we shouldn't. We have to break the cycle. However, there's a proper way of breaking the cycle because some young adults would just like to break the cycle by severing their ties with their relatives and never uh, and never uh, never appear to them again because uh th- because uh, they're afraid that uh they would leech on uh leech on him or her especially their parents and only um and maybe only uh uh help their parents if they are really in an in an emergency situation now again it's different sto- strokes for different folks so i'm not here to say that that's um, that's a, the right mindset or the wrong mindset i don't even know if uh what i am going to talk about or say to you now is right or wrong but Here's my take on breaking the cycle properly. To properly break the cycle, parents need to let their children make a living or earn for it on their own terms. Now, these uh, these uh, adult children, uh, these young uh, people or young adults will fail in their endeavors. They will also make mistakes along the way. But they will certainly appreciate your support, dear parents, and the right amount of advice and wisdom. They would certainly appreciate it if you would be kind to them and just tell them, Anak, uh, I, will not, I will not hinder you and uh, uh, I will not uh, leech on you if you would uh, give me uh, a portion of your... Uh, of your income in order for me to uh, survive here I would uh, I would thank you but if you don't I totally understand that's the thing or that's the that's something that parents must learn to uh, to say to their adult children because uh, as uh, let's face it we don't have an aged care system here in this country so um, anything goes bahala na that's uh that's basically uh aged care here in the philippines but hopefully that would change now to continue with my thought to properly break the cycle young adults also need to realize that uh, they will go and grow old that being a quote unquote self-made individual will bite them in the backside later in life should they have children and especially if they decide not to now i am not saying that young adults should have children if they don't want to it's okay if they want to it's good if there's uh if there's uh a problem in making a children uh, making children or um conceiving it's totally fine and i hope that they would resolve it because here's the irony here's the irony a lot of young adults would like to marry but don't like to have children especially in the upper and maybe the lower middle classes however everyone beyond uh, be, uh, below that uh, the lower classes or C um, classes C D and e, or uh, classes D and E. Uh, they don't uh, care if they have uh, a lot of children or a lot of mouths to feed, but uh, do not have uh, the sufficient uh, amount to uh, support all of them. So. It's not just an an imbalance, but it's also an irony. Now, 
some say that adoption can be uh could be a way to uh basically not let children experience uh adverse poverty they're also saying that don't have children uh it you would um you would do the world a a, a disservice if you have children and uh no matter how how you would love to have one in this economy that's basically what they want they're saying but let's also not forget that there are couples who really love to uh, be married and have their own children and yet for some reason they got miscarried and adopting one is a very very long process now i really don't want to go into details here but i do know some contacts who are married but they don't have children of their own or or they're adopting uh adopting a child uh or an or, or a young adult because uh they just wanted to have uh someone maybe not to take care of them but to um in uh inherit the wealth that they have maybe that's just me or maybe that's just uh uh they work or they want to work so uh i'm not really uh against that and uh yeah it's it's just ironic because uh it really is um it's just uh it's just too ironic honestly so uh to continue with what i say here having no oblig- obligation towards their parents is no excuse to live a selfish or self-centered life now when i say a self-made individual by the way i am not saying that uh they're the ones who uh they're the ones who succeed in life now i i really uh commend those who are succeeding in life as young as they are uh uh and i just hope that a lot of people would uh, a lot of people who are in that uh, kind of category would have all the help that they need so that uh they wouldn't tell themselves that they are self-made men because from what i just heard in one of the graduation speeches by arnold schwarzenegger uh, ba- uh back then maybe a few years ago uh um there is no such thing as a self-made man and basically you just have to help other people so that they can achieve uh, where they wanted to be so uh that also uh that also uh connects here because as i said having no obligation towards their parents uh is no excuse to live a selfish or self-centered life now uh okay you're you're successful and uh you're successful that's uh that's good and fine but you also splurge it on the things that you uh that you want because you know you didn't have the chance to uh, have it during your childhood so why not that's being self uh selfish and self-centered now if you don't really don't want it wanted to uh give to your parents because they have been assholes and uh and you're already successful help out those who deserve it help out those who deserve your help offset uh offset your uh experiences and maybe even some of your wealth to those who really deserve it and they don't they didn't have the opportunity to uh to imitate or build upon what you have done so breaking the cycle breaking the cycle means balancing self-love with genuine concern so uh it's okay to uh 
to love yourself. I mean, you cannot give what you what you do not have. But then again, you're also called to be uh, a, a, a someone that would uh, contribute to society in the best way possible. So that's just my take on it. Now, why do I connect this with uh, H2O and his mother? Because we all have to break this cycle. That's 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 true. But as a personal contact of mine is, say, is saying, we have to break the cycle at the bottom and not on the top. Because uh, there are parents who legitimately sacrificed their whole lives and their whole careers just to take care of their children. I can relate because my mother is one of them. And if she hear th- hears this, I would just like to tell her that I love her. She's still alive. She's still alive and well. She's still with us. But I just wanted to tell you all that that's what she did. Okay, now, one final thing or one final uh, topic for this uh, three uh Free topic uh, special for the Intrepid podcast is the SOGI bill. I'm not sure of the the acronym here, but it's S O G I E. Now, you may be wondering what what's my take on this, and uh, maybe that's the thing that I uh, I would just like to tell you is that homosexuals are already accepted in our society. There are some of them who have been successful in their fields. There are some who have uh, basically uh, held office already. And uh, compared to uh, straight men, homosexual men are uh, have a much better opportunity overall in the work that in the work that they do. That is not uh, that is not manual labor. So that's uh, that's just that. Now this Soji uh, bill that is being pushed in both houses of Congress is just a little bit shady because it's actually a policy more on privileges for homosexuals and other members of the LGBT community than equity and justice. And there are even some members, or or there are even some homosexuals and other members of the LGBT community that that really question the the existence of this bill altogether. Because uh, there are already laws in place in our country that would protect our our homosexual and LGBT uh, Uh, other LGBT uh, fellow Filipinos. What's the point? I would just like to genuinely ask what is the point of uh, of pushing this aside from uh, uh, from a more uh, for uh, raising awareness for uh, uh, discrimination and all that. I personally hope that discrimination against anybody regardless of gender, regardless of anything, uh, would stop. Full stop. So, yeah. Um, that's just uh, that's just my take on it. Also, this provision or this uh, legislative, uh, legislative thing is actually subject to legal abuse. And it can be... Uh, it can be said or it can be very much uh, uh, used by homosexuals uh, for uh, malevolent reasons. And I hope it, it, it's not the case. And uh, yeah, because it can be uh, subject to legal abuse, especially for uh, battered men 
or battered straight people uh and i'm only um i'm only thinking about uh, the jo- the Johnny Depp uh the Johnny Depp legal saga and yeah it's subject it's subject to legal abuse and uh, honestly uh i mean it also boils down to privilege as well because you see uh there are there really are members of the lgbt community who uh who would still use the toilets uh that are appropriate to the uh to the sex organs that they are quote unquote assigned uh to them at birth kumbaga uh if they if they have a stick they would have they would go to a male uh to a male toilet if they have uh if they have a hole to a female toilet and uh and that's basically uh what i was supposed to say and also and also it's not really a christian thing it's not really just a christian thing because there are also uh there are also muslims who are very much uh are very much uh questioning this uh proposal as well because as we all know uh in islam uh homosexuals are punished severely and uh while i con- uh while i don't condone that or what what i don't condone violence uh we have to take note of the cult- of the cultural context that they have so well, that's that so again it would uh they would not only butt heads with christians but also with muslims who are uh very much uh, adhering to their own faith also there are some women who are insecure that uh transgender women would uh would use female toilets now i am not saying that they shouldn't but uh then again we have to n- uh notice or should i say uh we have to consider as well the uh the perspectives of biological females i mean uh they're also uh they're also afraid of uh of uh harassment just like uh straight males are afraid or even uh or even vulnerable to uh to harassment and something that really is close to my heart is that children who are born in non-heterosexual quote-unquote families would also suffer in this uh in this kind of uh this kind of provision because uh they would have two dad two fathers or two mothers and they would be the laughing stock of their classmates who are uh who have heterosexual parents while bullying is something that that shouldn't exist period I just can't um I just can't wonder how uh how these children would uh, fare once they grow uh, as adults because they would be uh uh they would be a possible strain in our already uh in our already overwhelmed uh mental health system here in the Philippines and it's and it sucks it sucks big time that's it now one last thing before we wrap up now one last thing before we wrap up this uh this uh podcast episode is that i recently watched or should i say read or 
uh, I recently knew of the story of this um, feminist author, uh, Nora Vincent. Now, unfortunately, she's no longer with us because uh, uh, tragically or sadly, she has decided to basically delete herself from the face of the earth. And it's because she cosplayed being a man for almost two years. Now, Nora Vincent is actually the author of this uh, book called Self-Made Man, where she writes of her uh, adventures in cross-dressing and, uh, be- and becoming or acting, or in neurodivergent terms, masking as a man. And uh, basically, she's saying that male privilege is a myth because as, uh, as she experienced herself uh, as Ned Vincent, yes, uh, she invented a male name for herself, and uh, that's Ned. As she experienced it, uh, she very much uh, saw uh, the reactions of her fellow women. Uh, in regards to uh, to men and boys, and it really uh, it really hits her hard because you know uh, it's really uh, it's really something. It's really uh, how do I say this? It's something that uh, it hits harder on her because she never uh, experienced this as a woman, and uh, basically she's more appreciative now of uh, of the female privilege that she has, or uh, ha- or that society has imposed on women. Because uh, as she have uh, noticed in her own experiment, men are most likely to uh, be uh, dis- at a disadvantage when it comes to a lot of things, uh, a lot of things, especially if they interact with women. And the trauma is so. Uh, the trauma is so hard, or it's so. Uh, devastating that uh, just recently she decided to uh, not live anymore and uh, because of it it really uh, weighed her down personally in her personal life so I only hope that she uh, that Nora Vincent would rest in peace So, uh, going full circle to the uh, concept of Advent. Today, is the, uh, in this recording, is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary. Now, I would like to connect the, the male and female uh, dynamics with that of Jesus and Mary, not Adam and Eve. Because Jesus and Mary are the new Adam and new Eve. So that's uh, basically uh, what Christians, or at least uh, liturgical Christians, believe. Now, Jesus being the Son of God himself, omnipotent, powerful, mighty, and uh, basically uh, the big guy, humbled himself. To become the son of a virgin, of a woman, and that woman is Mary. So basically, he chose as God to become a child of a holy mother. And that holy mother is Mary. 
She is full of grace. She is the epitome of what a woman should be because God glorified her despite uh, her absolute humility. And maybe it's the reason why God chose Mary. And if God says something and uh, it involves uh, a choice of His, it, we're not, uh, we're not, uh, we're not supposed to question Him, so to say. So, it turns out the rest is history and Christianity as a, as a whole, uh, exists today. So, I just wanted to connect that as a segue to uh, the male privilege and uh, and Nora Vincent's uh, uh, experiment on the work that she has done. Now, I've been talking too much and I would like to end it. But before I do, as uh, being someone who adheres to the belief in belief of the divine in collaboration with human endeavors, I invite you to pray for this nation. But aside from the, uh, instead of the collect for the nation, since its advent, we shall pray the collect for the first Sunday of Advent, which in the divine office is being prayed after the collect of the day. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which thy Son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. And on that note, I end today's podcast, the second for uh, the second and last actually for this year. I'm not sure if it's going to be the last for the 2022, but it's uh, the last podcast, the last uh, podcast episode uh, that would not tackle the year end review of this year. Either way, I would like to thank you all for listening so uh uh and uh for making it this far recording of this episode will be available on youtube with further plans to expand other to other platforms so please make sure to check out for that and uh i'll make sure to update as well the spotify uh version of this podcast all of the all of the materials and uh and uh, references that I have mentioned in this episode would be listed in the recording's description. And if you, uh, if you think there are things that I might not have included in this recording, or if you want to have your say about matter, please feel free to leave them in the comments below if applicable. And with all that said, 
This is Intrepidian Rinyon reminding you to, at all times, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, be kind to yourself and to each other, and thank you for tuning in. From here in Intrepid HQ, see you next time for another talk here on the Intrepid Podcast. From me and from the rest of my family to all of yours, I'm a meaningful advent. Ian out.